So that's a hallelujah, ain't it? And I'm just about to take off. But also thank God for close friends and good neighbors. Thank God for our health, able to go, able to stay, able to pray. God wants us to have his blessings upon our life, and he wants us to be healthy enough to enjoy him. A right mind. You know, I thank God for a right mind. When we get saved or born again, then God gives us a mind and a will to serve him. Thank God for Jesus. You know, thank, you know Jesus is so mighty, folks, that he would even love us, even consider saving us. But, but you know, the Scripture says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It said God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. The gift of God is eternal life. We receive the Son of God. We receive, number one, adoption to the family of God. We receive sonship. We become God's sons and daughters. We receive kinship. Jesus becomes our brother. Boy, that's pretty great, ain't it? A little thought, fellowship, anytime, any day, anywhere, we can talk to God and he can talk to us. A little thought, and, and uh, I've got uh, needs met, prayers answered, miracles created, doors open and doors closed. So, you know, we we got to be thankful. There's, there's times that doors need to be closed and we can pray and ask God to close them, but then there's times that we want them to be opened. Also, we want to be thankful for the Holy Ghost, not only for Jesus, but also the Holy Ghost as a comforter. He gives us comfort. The Holy Ghost as a baptizer. He baptizes us into to the body of Christ. And also the Holy Ghost as the, the, the Holy Ghost baptizer. He, he gives us the fullness of the fullness of measure, and, he, and, and, and God saves us, and then he, it's measured unto us as our faith, and as we, as we develop in God, and he measures more and more and more. And a lot of times, you know, Pentecostal folks will pray until they're, you know, they can't even stand up, say, God, give me more of the anointing. But, you know, God gives us enough for the task at hand, and then when the, we need more of the anointing and more of the power of God, then he will give it to us as, as it is needed. And so we need to go forth. Thank God for the Holy Ghost as a teacher, a counselor. He teaches us God's Word. He reveals the secrets of God's Word. He takes the cover off so we can understand God's Word. Also, we want to be thankful for our pastors. And I, I feared that'd be good, you know, to throw that in today. A pastor, a watchman on the wall to warn the people, a shepherd to watch over, to protect, to keep from wolves, to love the sheep, to give his life for the sheep, to be married to the church, and the church to be married to him. Responsible to feed the sheep, teach and preach the word rightly divided, to give both the meat, the milk, and the meat of the word, to break the bread of life into pieces, that can be eaten and swallowed, to give warnings, to give reproof, to give love and restoration, to help the weak, to help those who hurt, to help those cast aside, to win as many as possible. One life is changed, our life is changed one sermon at a time. That message changed or saved my life. So you know, a lot of times, folks, we go to church, and I remember especially as a young Christian, I'd go to church, that preacher would preach, and it's just what I needed. Just what I needed. You know, I needed chocolate cake that day, and that's what, you know, that's what in the sermon, he had a, a chocolate cake or a, a big steak or maybe some just plain old bologna, you know. To Brother Gibson said, I'm, we're back to beans and taters. You know, the evangelist had to leave. <laughs> but, you know, boy, we can live on beans and taters, can't we? To be thankful for our pastor, but also be thankful for the teachers. They bring the word to us in simplest form. They try to find Jesus in every verse and then find us and find her as we can move up. The teachers, the teaching of the word, we find we must put off the things of the world, put on Christ, love God and people, forgiveness, the whole armor of God. We must lay down things. We must take up things. And the, the, what we take up is the cross. We must overcome unbelief. Rebellion, pride, temptation, Satan, and unforgiveness. Teachers try to, to show us the way more clearly, verse by verse, God speaks to us one scripture at a time. Their prayer, Lord, teach me, show me, and I will teach and I will show others. To be thankful for the faithful, number 10. People you can depend on, people you can trust, lean on with all your weight. Abraham was perfect before God. Job, a perfect, upright man. Zechariah, blameless before God. Abraham, because you have done this, because you have 
I offered your son, your only son Isaac, upon the altar. You have proven your love for me. You have shown me that you trust me. Therefore, I trust you. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Trust the Lord with all your might. Lean not to your own understanding and all your ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. An old saying, here we go, an old saying, cleanness next to godliness. And I know some of them's heard that. But I say faithfulness is next to godliness. When we're faithful unto the house of God, to the things of God, then it's godliness. Abide in me and my words abide in you, and you shall ask what you will. To meditate upon this word both day and night, so shall you make your way to prosper, so shall you have good success. Because of faithful people and faithful giving, we have a nice building, nice fellowship hall. We're able to pay bills and have some left. You have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many. We've been faithful over little things. He said, I'll make you rule over much. Heaven will be full of faithful people. Thankful. Uh, we won't accidentally get there. We won't accidentally get to heaven. We must press into it because we must run the race with patience, run to win. We must keep our eyes on Jesus, stay focused. We must lay aside every weight that slows us down or draws us away or keeps us from God's best. We must endure to the end to be saved. We must finish our course. We must finish our race. We must take up our cross daily and the thought occupy till he comes. Heaven's just a heartbeat away. And folks, we've got to make it. And you know, I, I, want, to, I want to thank God. You know, my little church and church family. And I thank God for all the people that he's sent our way. And I want to thank God for each one that's, that's given their, their heart to Jesus this past year. And also each one we got to water baptized. We still baptize folks. And thank God, you know, Eddie, you know, he'll heat that water up. And people say, well, you know, I want to be baptized in the river. <laughs> then, you know, go for it, you know. And but I thank God for that little baptistry there. And the water's all heated up. And it is, it is great. And if you've ever been baptized in a baptistry and baptized in the river, I think you'd go with with what I say. Amen. But you know, folks, it, it, we need to be thankful for the different people God puts in our life. It says God sends sunshine and rain, but also he sends the people of sunshine, people with sunshine. They give sunshine. They give us laughter. They cheer us up. They bring the best out in us. So God places a lot of great people in our life, and we need to, to take heed to it, and we need to be thankful. Folks, uh, uh, God bless you, Lord. If you're there under my voice and you need Jesus, I just call him. It says, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray a blessing upon those under my voice. I break every yoke. I pull down every stronghold. Lord Jesus, have your way in their life. In Jesus' name. God bless you as a prayer.